Good afternoon, it's two o'clock on Monday, August 15th. I'll call to order the Finance Committee for Knox County. Uh, welcome everyone, I appreciate your attendance and we will start with a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Lundy? Here. Commissioner Derrett? Here. Commissioner Oster? Commissioner Ward? Commissioner Schoonmaker? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Lee? Commissioner Beeler? Here. Commissioner Daly? Commissioner Jay, Here. Commissioner Frazier, seven members present. We do have a quorum. I guess it wasn't a roll call vote. That was just a roll call. So welcome, everyone. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I did not have it on the agenda. My apologies. But uh, we do need to approve the minutes from our February 13th, 2023 meeting. Those are sent out in advance. I'll entertain a motion for the Motion approval. to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Hill, first by Commissioner Schoonmaker. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Minutes are approved. Uh, we did open up the opportunity for public forum. There were no takers. Given our robust crowd in the audience, I don't know if there's anyone here that is open for public forum, but if anybody wishes to speak, speak now. All right, moving on to our first agenda item, our summary report on our Knox County taxes and investments from Trustee Biggs. Trustee Biggs, if you'll join us at the podium. And you have a uh, digital copy on your uh, agenda online. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Chairman Jay, I appreciate your time. Just real quick, um, we have our favorables. We remain up in collections by $11 million over last year for the same time period. Um, we're receiving right at 565 basis points uh, right now, which is very favorable. It's the highest it's been since pre-September uh, 11th. That's, that's the highest we've had in 22 years. Scheduled on for tax sale 24 uh, at the beginning of January 2024, about 1,360 parcels. That list is being drawn down quickly. We already have 610 that have paid out. Um, actually, our summons for service of process are being printed today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. So we should start serving process on those parcels in the next two weeks. We've done about 4.6 to 4.8 million dollars uh, on the parcels that have paid out as of right now. The bank account balances report for six-year comparison for March, April, May are in your packet as requested at the last finance meeting. The unfavorables, um, the downturn in the, economy, in the economy, we had a large bankruptcy that will affect some areas around here with Yellow Freight Corporation, which is uh, Roadway, USP, uh, Holland International, YRC Logistics, and uh, Express Lane Service, so we're watching after those. Also, one of the things that we're looking at uh, that's not on the sheet, but we were talking about earlier, um, a lot of the commercial properties around here that was using the PPP loans for different things, they are starting to hit that two-year delinquency rate. Over the past month and a half, we've done about 512 to 516 million in delinquencies on commercial properties that we went out and collected. Our teams went out and got those. Um, we're starting to work with people on doing um, Basically, what we're, we're offering now for our commercial for our commercial businesses to ensure that they don't go out, we have a bank draft situation where they're paying monthly so they can be paid out by February 28th on their delinquencies. Uh, also, TIF rebate pay, payouts for April and June were $2.4 million. There was no BEP payment, obviously, for May and July. We dis we've discussed that multiple times. Um, to help finance schools payroll over the summer. So the debt service payment to the sum of $80 million during that time. The trends to watch, we continue to watch the market to make sure we continue to get the best possible rate uh, on any investments. Right now, like we stated, that 5.65 so good, we're really watching where we invest on callables, non-callables. We're doing non-callables now. We're trying to shrink that window down to where it's at so to make sure that we're padded up enough to where when the market does start to go downward we're good like we talk about on investment committee with Stephen rosen so that's all i have for now does anybody have any questions mr Skimner. thank you mr chairman uh trustee biggs uh will your office in the next couple months send the commissioners by district the um the properties that are going the january yeah. tax sale we're we're uh what we're doing right now is we're sending out letters 
in anticipation that those letters will actually draw down. I would love to, to not have a tax sale and everybody pay out. That'll probably never happen. But we're trying to draw down on that amount so we don't have to put as many man hours into it. So I should have a really good list of the parcels by hopefully mid-September, whenever the tax notices are getting ready to go out. Too. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Trustee um, Biggs, is the schedule for tax notices um, still on track this year? Last year was it's early. A, it's early. We're okay, early so this year. when do when does that look like for the schedule? So usually it's the first week in October. Um, we've gotten with the assessor's office, and we're actually already sent our files off to the comptroller's office. And they what they do is we get it from the assessor's office. They send us our role. Our we got a team, and we review it, kind of spot check, then we send it off to the comptroller's office. They send it back to us again. Then we implement the tax relief and tax freeze data that also goes in because those those notices actually drop because that's considered a voucher. It's not like a regular tax notice. Then once we compile all the data together, then we send it back off to the comptroller's office again. And then when we get it back, it goes to Williamsburg for print. So right now we're operating at about a week and a ahead of a week and a half ahead of schedule. So we're anticipating the tax notices to go out mid to late September. So about a week and a half to two weeks ahead of schedule. And are you confident in the uh, in the software continued repairs? Have they finally gone through that checklist and finished? Or are we still in the so, they're not yet done yet mode? <laughs> you know, th I'm approaching that year mark, right? Like, yeah. and and I, I I'm confident in a lot of its capabilities, except for its delinquency capabilities, just being totally on it. I don't like the software on that portion of it, just because it's hard for us to, just in layman's terms, a summary breakdown of delinquency. So if you're in the state of Tennessee, if you're more than two years delinquent, it's usually sent off to the clerk and master's office because us and Shelby were a different, we're, we're structured and different in government, charter form of government. So we do our own our own collections. We have a pretty large, you know, amount of delinquency. So the software from Cat eGov Catalyst is structured to where it's supposed to be tossed off to the clerk and master's office, like the rest of the state of Tennessee, except for us. We have been working with ju with one of the representatives, Justin Bowman. And we've gotten to the point now to where we've basically tweaked it so much on our end that like they're writing the software the way that we want it to go. And it's, it's not bad, but the problem is, is I'm kind of like a, a pretty quick, you know, like I'm like, Hey, I have 1,375 parcels for tax sale 24. I want, <laughs> I wanted it yesterday. I want the delinquency component like it should be yesterday. But, um, the, we have new help. We kind of, I had a big disagreement with with the software company and I told them that, you know, we would put in what's called a it's called a hot fix. What a hot fix is is something that my team or myself feels like it needs to be done within 24 hours. Well, to me any issue is a hot fix, right? So, what we were doing is I was putting them in and I was labeling, labeling them as hot fixes and they weren't getting done in time, so I called Steve, the owner of the company, and I said I want a 10% to 25% back off of our software company and he's off of our software contract. And he said, okay, what's going on? So I told him, so they removed the people that we were working with and gave us a fresh set of eyes and we don't have who we used to have. And it's so much better than it used to be. <laughs> like we had people. And that's that, like the third or fourth crew they've given us. Yeah. Well, this time I, it was a little more stern, I guess is what you could say. Cause I was like, I'm, you know, I'm, fed up but now we're on to the delinquency component and that's literally the only thing that's lacking everything else has been great we've got our barcode scanners now our credit card stuff's going great uh if you're a current person you know and you're current on property taxes anything it i mean it's faster than it's ever been but the delinquency side of the thing because of the way us and shelby operate it's just just personally i don't feel like it's what it should be honestly commissioner daly thank you mr chair Mr. Biggs, how are you? I'm well, and you, sir? Doing great. On the uh, tax sale? Yes, sir. Will this be in an absolute auction, or will, I guess to finish out the question, you know, will they have a year to pay their back taxes, or will this be an absolute? So the new statute states that, you know, you have 
Um, if you're two to five years delinquent, you have one year to redeem. If you're five to eight years delinquent, you have 120 or 180 days. If you're eight years or more, it's only 90 days. Um, in our tax sale in January, all the parcels that were able to be redeemed were only uh, 90 days. So those have been turned over to surplus now, and Powell Auction can actually sell those in surplus that we have. So um, the rate that we're moving on a lot of these delinquencies, a lot, a lot of them are in specific areas of town that are kind of blotted, and they're over that eight-year threshold. So a lot of them are going to be 90-day redeemable properties. What that does is, is that turns that property around so quick that if somebody like you or Richie are interested in it, y'all are neighbors, and there's a easement or something in between you guys, instead you can get that a lot quicker at our surplus auction that Powell Auction holds for a cheaper price than paying what the property taxes are. Because there's honestly, there's no reason anybody else would be interested in it. So they're they're turning a lot faster than they've ever have. That's not me. That's that's the state. That's not anything I've done. So that's that's all state that's helped us out do that. So I'm very appreciative. Is there one coming up with Powell Auction? I don't you know. know. That's a Ben Sharble question. Um, over at procurement, I have no idea. All I've done is I've turned over everything to uh, the clerk and master, and we did it back. Actually, we did it back in May. So um, if they wanted to have one next week, they could have one next week if if they're prepared for that. But I'll assist in if they ever need me in any way I can. But yeah. um, I have oh, Commissioner Schumacher. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, is this an appropriate time for you to elaborate on some of the initiatives that you're going to put in place to help the taxpayers mm -hmm. uh, with the collection mm -hmm. or the uh, uh, property tax, particularly like in my district? Yeah, um, sure. So unfortunately, we have uh, learned that our Farragut field office is going to be coming up for a renovation. Um, that's, that's a good thing because... As Commissioner Beeler could tell you, it's very difficult for anybody with a wheelchair or like or Commissioner Schumer could also tell you it's difficult if you got a wheelchair, if you have a, a walker, a cane or anything to be able to get up the flight of stairs to go upstairs to Farragut Town Hall to pay. We've had multiple issues and sometimes that elevator is not always working appropriately. Um, so we're moving downstairs and in, to do so will be more accommodating and more ADA accessible, except for the renovation is gonna take 12 to 18 months. Unfortunately, sorry, unfortunately, that means that um, right when tax bills hit, we go under renovations. So our Farragut office won't be open this tax season. Um, we're anticipating a rather large portion of the Farragut taxpayers to go to our Cedar Bluff department. Now. I would say every commissioner's probably been to the Cedar Bluff department. That's really not an easy drive to get into and get out of. Um, parking is kind of limited. Um, and we have, and I would say Commissioner Beeler could probably vouch for me on this one. There's a lot of bumper to bumper accidents in the way that the parking lot structured out there. Um, and we also, you know, whenever the fall comes, there's a lot of acorns that fall on the exit ramp or the emergency ramp that is ADA accessible. Commissioner Smith or Randy Smith from risk management uh, and myself, we've looked at it. There's a big tree that's overhanging. So I say all that to say this, um, the Farragut office does have a lot of elderly and we're going to offer an opportunity for us to bring our services to you with our mobile scanners and stuff like that and come out uh, with our credit card machines. We're gonna be able to offer you an uh, opportunity to pay by e-check, um, and it's only gonna cost a dollar. So I'm anticipating we're gonna be in Farragut a lot. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to just set up a table outside of the renovations downstairs and let, them, let me take payment the month of February if Farragut Town Hall will allow us to do so and to just strictly take credit card payments e-checks no cash we're not going to do cash but um you know it's 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 i'm not gonna lie it's a, it's a very big hindrance right now farragut's one of our best satellite offices and all of our satellite offices we do about 24 million dollars between all five of them and i mean for farragut to be out um it's it's going to hurt this tax season yeah commissioner hill just um Thinking a little as you're um, talking about all that, have you um, talked about perhaps um, 
trying to move into the uh, senior citizen center that out there, or perhaps a, um, a church, or just temporarily I'm, locate? That's a good question. Thursday, I'm having lunch with David Smoke to actually talk about a, a secondary location for us to move into part time. Uh, this this Thursday coming up, he and I are having lunch to talk about an opportunity or where we might be able to go. If not, not maybe the whole year, maybe if he would just let me do something from October to February, you know, uh, and, and hit that small window that, you know, the taxes are usually or we're, the, we're our busiest. Um, whenever taxes, and I'm sure you guys are all aware, you know, our deadline's February 28th, except for this year, it's leap year. But right after that, we have March, April, and May, which is whenever we're signing people up for tax relief, tax freeze, and disabled veterans benefits. And that's a very, very busy time for us with our senior citizens. And so if I could figure out a way to maybe be at the, you know, the opportunity to be at the senior area, I would, I would greatly appreciate it. If you, any, you know, I'm sure, you know, Mr. Smoke, you guys could help me out. I would, I would, I would definitely be honored for you guys to do that for me. Okay. Um, one last, this is a question. I just want to put it on your radar. I was actually going back through some of our, um, state uh, legislative priorities from like years ago, I mean, yeah. back in, uh, you know, 2018, 19, 20, 21. And something that we, we've we kept on there that I'm gonna, I'm gonna send an email to you and the property assessor to kind of maybe work together on was those sort of large commercial and industrial partners who work with those third party groups to try to get their property assessments down and therefore their taxes down. and. And it was a big issue for a while, especially when big box stores were transitioning how they operate. And, and so as we get sort of heading towards another legislative season, I just wanted to see if you guys can do some more research and find out and come back to the commission and find out, are they, is that still an issue? Are they still trying to, because they're essentially cutting out our tax base from underneath us by going directly to the state and, and working around us. And is that something we still, we need to now bring up to our state legislators and try to close that loophole Absolutely. Down the road. So just yeah. keep an eye out for an email. It's, it, I believe it is still an issue. Um, do you guys have a legislative session yet before you go, like an opportunity before you talk to your alls lobbyists? Because I'd love to come and just listen. Um, I have a usually, I mean, it happens sometime in the fall, and then we try to get in front of, um, we talk to the mayor and his priorities, uh, his, his look at his priorities, and then we try to get together with our, I hope we'll get together with our delegation, like in November, not, not in January, and start working on bills that might help us. So so I'll just keep an eye out for it. I haven't asked if that's okay that I would like your all's help on. So when, whenever we're talking about tax sales, one of the things that um, we're working on is, you know, here in Knox County, we we do the tax sales for the city of Knoxville. Uh, Director Book and myself have talked about this many, many times. Um, we sell the city's property. We don't charge them anything to, to do this. The city gets their portion of, of the property taxes. We get our portion of the property taxes. And usually the majority of them are in the city of Knoxville. So I ran into something whenever we were going through budget last year and kind of like penny pension, you know. Um, we send off what's called excess proceeds to the state. And we've done it for years and years and years. It goes and it sits in a non-interest bearing account in the clerk and master's office. And then they have it after a specific amount of time. To my knowledge, the state's putting that money in their rainy day fund, every county that sends excess proceeds there. But I've been asking around, why do we, after we put in all the work, right? We're serving process. We're taking pictures. We're going out these properties five and six times in the city and the county. Why can't we keep the excess proceeds here whenever we put forth all the work and we keep that money here to do things with it that we need to do? You know, this past tax sale in, in January the 5th of this year, we sent $2.3 million to them. $2.3 million is huge to me, for, and I know it is to everybody up here too. So I'm trying to start putting it on people's radar. It's something that I want to do. I don't know if I'm going to win. I pro Probably not. But I'm going to try to do anything I can to make sure we get that money back and us stop sending our excess proceeds to the state of Tennessee and let's keep it right here so we can do things like drives and roads and, 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 and other things that y'all want to do. I don't know. Let us know as you find out more. There's a, state always finds a reason to keep more money, but um, right. we, we want to add that something to our legislative priorities as well. We could definitely do that. Thank you so but much. But I also think looking at how we operate, if we provide a service, to me, if we provide a service to the city and we do all of the work, 
Now, those city residents are also Knox County residents, so they, they pay for your office and, and the services as well. But if there are a, a sort of above and beyond things that happen, then we should examine that. We've been talking about how much money we could save by just putting the city and county tax notice in the same envelope together. Yeah, I think they've been talking about that for about 30 years. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Common sense doesn't always uh, drive the boat, of course. Right. But. All right. Thank you, Trustee Sorry. Biggs. Any other thank further you. questions? All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks. the reports. Uh, next on our agenda, we will hear from uh, Knox County Schools Finance Director, Mr. Ron McPherson, on a report of our Knox County Schools finances. Mr. McPherson. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. I'll, I'll say this. If Trustee Biggs can figure out a way to persuade the state on anything, we'll be all ears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we'll be watching that. Um, so I'm going to probably sound like a broken record, but it's, again, the news is, is for a while, has been is continued to be really positive for us. We, we're in a strong financial position still. We anticipate that when the books are finally closed for FY23, that that we'll be in a in a good position. Um, we're anticipating again a lot. Again, the books haven't closed yet, but we're thinking we're going to probably land at fund balance about 12% of our operating budget for FY24. Which, uh, according to GFOA, which uh, for school districts is pretty healthy, they're they're recommending 10% or higher, and of course the state requirement is 3%, so we're con considerably above <laughs> above that. Uh, I will tell you, in years past though, we would we would just hover just above that. So it's we we sleep a lot better at night now than we than than we used to. Um, sales tax continues to trend positively. It's it's about 15% more in FY23 over over year to year over the FY22 at the same point in time. But, and uh, Chris will, will, I'm sure, speak more to this, but what we are noticing over the last couple of months is that growth is, is starting to flatten. So it, again, it's trending positively, but not quite as positively as it has been. So we're, we're keeping a close eye on that. We monitor that along with the county month by month. Um, so we'll, we'll have a sharp eye on that. Our areas of concern, are still the same ones. Uh, TISA sustainability, as, as you're aware, when we talked about during the when, during budget development, um, a considerable amount of funds from the state came to school districts. The, the the dilemma there is that the growth models that we've seen for years, future years, do not appear you know very positive. In fact, would I would say that it would probably be difficult to even cover just natural inflationary growth. So that's why we, we had to be very cautious in how we budgeted for FY24. We're going to have to be very strategic in FY25 as well. Couple that with the fact that funding for initiatives through uh, the federal dollars through ESSER, uh, that will end in September of 2024. So uh, while the things that we do in ESSER uh, roll up to our four core priorities, just like the things we do uh, through the other funds in our school system, whether it's general purpose and so forth, those all point to the four core priorities, but what we're going to be faced with is essentially initiatives competing with one another, right? So initiatives that we're funding through ESSER will be competing for the same dollars that we currently fund initiatives through in the general purpose budget. So uh, that's why we we have a, um, a return on investment committee uh, at uh, back at, uh, at, at our place, uh, and, and so we're looking at these initiatives very, very uh, diligently <laughs> scrutinizing them as to uh, what are the outcomes, how does that how does that look with regards to the funding, what's the return on investment there. Although it's a little difficult, as you know, with with educational initiatives, is you know return on investment. What does that even mean sometimes? And so, um, you know, a, a, the research will say that sometimes it takes even three to five years whether you find out whether something's working or not working. If you implement it even with fidelity, right? So we're, we're kind of grappling with some things, but I can tell you that we will have no choice but to be strategic in FY25. I know it's almost a year away, but but we're you know we can't take our eyes off of that as we as we go through. Uh, trends to watch again. I'm sure Mr. Caldwell will talk more about this, but the economy we watch. Consumer spending very closely. A third of our budget is funded through uh, local option sales tax, but almost 50% is funded through through TISA, and that state funding model depends heavily on sales sales tax as well. So that's that's why it's uh, it's very important to us uh, the, how the economy goes. Often so goes the uh, budget and the financial position of what we do of our operations. So again, it sounds like a broken record. We're 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 in good financial position. But I think we have to, you know, approach the future with caution. In the um, 
report by the trustee, it said no BEP payments in May or July to help finance school payroll over mm -hmm. the summer, yeah. as well as a debt service payment of $80 million? Well, what happens is with BEP, of course it's TISA now, but previously it was BEP, what happens is those are funded over 10 installments, so it's August through May. Ah, okay. And so, so it's just July and August, or the well. So here's what they'll do. Actually, they'll fund a little. So it's 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 pretty much in, in in even increments throughout the year. So you'll see one in August, September, October, all the way through through April, and then May comes along. And so what they'll do is they'll they'll send a portion of it. And the reason they want to do that is because at the end of the year they kind of, you kind of settle up with with how did your actual enrollment figures align with what the T the the TISA estimates were. 10 months prior, right? So then they'll settle up with the difference. They'll clear that out in, in June. But yeah, that those those two months, um, June and July, or, in, or actually May, June, and July in some form, that's where that, that difference is. Okay. Yeah. And given the new model, when we when we spoke about the, the new model coming out last year, some of the dust settling, figuring yeah. out what's funded, what's not, is it really going to, do you feel like, separate of future growth or future mm -hmm. funding, which it seems to be a pattern of cry poor, but <laughs> have lots of money in the coffers and then tell everybody tough luck. Um, do you do you get the sense that at least the the knowledge or the funding formula yes. is, that, is, is known now and that dust is settled and you have a, whether it's funded or not, but it's not a question mark anymore? That, yes, sir. That's okay. correct. And and uh, they the state uh, beginning in about April, they began to send estimates, just similar to what would happen with BEP. Um, we ended up um, a little less. Um, I say a little, uh, maybe about nine nine hundred thousand. That's a lot of money, right? But it's it's in the grand scheme of our budget, percentage wise, it was. So kind of have some forgiveness there with the state because. What they were trying to do was determine uh, fiscal capacity that, you know, that infamous factor out there, right, that, that they flow through all of that, you know, through the districts. And so as, the, as the, the state was finalizing the model, they were trying to finalize the fiscal capacity formula as well. Uh, but so they were, they were good from April and on to give us estimates, although each time we looked at it, it's like it went down a little bit. You know, it's like we want to go it the other way. But by and large, it was really close to what they had initially said. So, yes, yeah, I, think, I think now some of that mystery is removed. Um, as to what the components that are funded and, and not funded. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the commission for Mr. McPherson? No Thanks. questions when you're Thanks, doing well. All right. Thank you very much. Um, our next agenda item is to hear from Mr. Chris Caldwell. Uh, we're going to go through a summary report, but then one of our deep dive uh, topics after the general overview is to, to get a little continuing education on our fund balance and cash flow management um, is it's a, a bit of a hot topic right now. So, Mr. Caldwell, take it away. You also have a both a handout and a uh, digital backup. Now I passed out um, the, um, the summary that we'll touch on first and we'll get into um, the deep dive into cash flow and fund balance slash reserves. Um, basically, the, the, the financial summary that you have in front of you, the one pager, comes from the monthly financial update that we sent out uh, this past week. That is not, just for the record, isn't completely done with the year. We're still accruing uh, uh, revenues and expenses through the end of this month, and then uh, we'll eventually get wrapped up. But it's it's a process to close, but um, we're really far along, and so we'll kind of just touch where we are to date, and I'll answer any of your questions. Stop me during, and we can talk then, or whatever you prefer. So uh, let's start in the blue shaded box on the summary, and you will see that revenues um, to date, as this was sent out, uh, was almost 951 um, million dollars uh, compared to uh, a year ago which was 933.1 uh, so that so revenues are about 17.8 million dollars higher than what they were a year ago at this time and this is all operating funds okay and so uh, this is looking basically 
uh, big picture. You look on the expense side, expenses are 940.5 million compared to about 885.8. .8. So expenses are up about $54.7 million. So you see there that there's a negative um, variance when you just look at the variance of revenue versus expenses year to year. That's nothing to be alarmed about. That just means that what we did from FY22 to FY23 was, was we had a big increase in the budget as we accounted for, for, for those expenses for revenue that was already there and, and, and we've spent those. And so um, I think it's important to note, and you can see that if you look at the excess deficiencies of revenues line in FY22 at this point, we had 47 million more in revenue than expenses. This year is about 10.5. Um, and so how do we get there? Um, a lot of that is going to be to the percent of the annual budget. So just so you're aware that from the revenues in FY23, we have collected 103.3% of the annual budget uh, compared to 22, we collected 105.35%. On the expense side, um, we've spent 97.4% of the budget this year as to where in FY22 we had spent 97.65%. So we've spent a little bit less of our budget this year than last year, but that budget is significantly larger. Um, we've also collected a little bit less this year above budget than we did a year ago. Uh, what I would say to that is we've done a better job of, of projecting our revenue sources so we didn't have as big of, of an increase o over what we anticipated. Um, so a big piece of this is, is, is local option sales tax. And so we'll, we'll look at that gray sh shaded block, uh, box and you will see um, July through May, we've since received June, which I will send out to you, I think, on Friday, and, we, and we'll get into that a little bit. But uh, as of here, we had July through May, but it also looks at, at a composite projection. So general fund would receive about 1.6 million more than what was budgeted for um, in, in this in FY23's budget. General purpose school funds, about 10.5 million more than what was budgeted in EPW is about 1.3 million more than what was budgeted for a total positive variance of about 13.4 million dollars. So some things to consider there. And I think this puts this a little bit in, into perspective. Um, from uh, FY20 to FY21, our increase in local option sales tax went from 179.4 million to 206.2 million, a 14.9% increase. Uh, from 21 to 22, our collections grew from 206.2 million to 237.6 million. That's a 15.2% increase. To this year in FY23, from 237.6 to 254.6, which is a 7.2% increase, which is still healthy, but it's not the double digit growth that we saw the, the previous two years. Um, so we co collected 254.6, that's what the uh, projection is through for FY23. The budget for FY24 is 249. So we do have a, a little bit of a, of a buffer there um, from what we have collected this year to uh, what we have budgeted for for, for 24. Uh, with that in mind, though, and Ron had brought this up, and so I'll touch on this. The last two months of local option sales tax, so it would be May collections and June collections. Uh, collections in uh, what's known as Citus of Knox County in May compared to the previous May was up only 0.1%. So that's flat, right? Uh, June was up 0.37%, basically flat again. So we kept on saying that we expected, the state kept on saying that we're going to hit a recession, but our recession would be flat. If you look at Knox County per se, 
that's pretty flat. The city of Knoxville in May was 6.7%, in June was 6.6%. That's still good growth and more growth than you would typically see, but we saw it start to, to turn down. Town of Farragut in May was 2.6% up to the previous May, and June was 1.98%. So once again, a downward trend. So to, Ron, to Ron's point, I think what we're going to see, I think what he, he would say as well, is a flattening of sales tax c compared to, to where we were a year ago. And so from a budget standpoint, we're probably in good shape. We have a little bit of flexibility there. Um, but I do believe what you will see is a flattening of, of sales tax. Um, the state has been projecting that, so we'll we'll see. It, if our flattening, if our recession is this, then that's okay. Um, so uh, next box uh, talks about current property taxes collected, 102.4 percent. So that's current. That 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 doesn't talk about um, any, about any type of delinquency. Uh, so once again, a positive number there as as it relates to uh, current pro property taxes. Um, we'll get into our trends now. A positive trend, hotel, motel tax collections uh, exceed, ex exceeded the budget for FY23 by over $5 million. And I sent this out, but I, I'll, I'll reiterate it. 10 of the 12 months of collections for hotel motel tax in FY23 was a million dollars or more, 10 or 12 months. Uh, we've never seen numbers like that, right, as it relates to to hotel motel tax. And so um, we our total collections for hotel motel tax was uh, $14 million. And so once again, a new, uh, we, we've never saw that, that, that number, our, our budget was 9.6 million. Our budget for FY24 is 10.5 million. Um, we do, we we coordinate with Visit Not Oxville on, on those budgets. We we knew we were going to be low as compared to what we'd collect in 23, but you want to also have some, some room in there. So uh, positive trend, um, you won't have, I mean, it's 50% ahead of budget basically, right? And so you sit there and you think, that's really good. So if hotel motel tax is high, it makes sense that sales tax is high because there, there's a core correlation to those two. Um, hotel motel revenue, though, as you all are well aware, are restricted as it relates to expense, right? It's got to be spent on tourism related uh, expenditures. Um, stable trends will go on to it. Um, sales tax collections have decreased and their highs have stabilized. We just kind of went through that more in detail. So I think we'll continue to see a stabilization of local option sales tax. And gasoline tax collections from July through May have basically been flat. And so um, gasoline tax ha has stabilized and uh, we're not seeing increases there. Uh, negative trends, these were the same as when, when we discussed a few months ago. And, and, and it doesn't, you know, I think... Inflation is coming down, but higher inflation leads to increased expenditures. That's that's not anything that's earth shattering. Uh, higher interest rates, which we are experiencing more and more now, right? I think I read this the weekend where the average uh, mortgage interest rates now over seven and headed to eight. Um, you know that leads to lower re revenue collections, especially for for the register of deeds, right? So if you're the register of deeds. You don't have any any refis right now at all. Uh, there are new sales, but I think a lot a bulk of their revenue comes from refis. That will probably pick up when interest rates come back down. But as of now, uh, it hurts their EPW building per permits and eventually other revenue sources. And so, ultimately, as we close the the books for FY twenty three, um, it it was a positive year uh, from a financial standpoint. Uh, you sh should be able to tell that by the number that we have on our designations list tonight. Uh, $8 million for designations in the general fund is fairly high. I mean, it, I, I don't ever recall it, recall it being that high. And so that shows that we had a really healthy year. Um, 
you could also look, I and mean, we, we, we talked we talk about hotel, motel tax. One other thing, uh, we, we were able to uh, terminate our swap on our bonds, which cost about $9 million to get out of. Uh, so we would have anticipated that our debt service fund would have decreased in fund balance by $9 million. It, in, it decreased by five, so it was really it was really four to the good this year. So we so we netted pr pr pretty decent there, and so um, just from a, a financial standpoint, healthy, um, and um, we we will work to um, uh, close this this fiscal year and see how the new year begins. Um, uh, Perry would tell you he hopes to close the year by the end of December, and so um, it's always there's always something that comes up, right, Perry? Every time, but I think ultimately that's our goal. Um, it's really hard. It's really hard to wind everything down and uh, then to, to put it into into a, an annual report. But they do a really good job, and uh, we'll get there. And um, and we look forward to FY twenty four. Um, Let's see how this year starts. We, um, as you know, uh, most, most of our, our revenues are two months in, in, in arrear. So if you ask me how FY24 is going right now, I would tell you a lot of expenses, no no revenue yet. We can touch on that in, on the cash flow piece as well. And so it's just how, it's how our world operates and we're used to it. But um, I think it'll be fine in the end. Questions? Um, Mr. Caldwell, since uh, hotel motel tax collections obviously are far exceeding even our, even our current budget numbers and projections, um, we're all confident the vols are going to go you know 12 and 0 at home, and those revenues are going to drive even higher. Um, what are some initiatives? I, I think we've seen more and more tourism activity. We've seen more and more. Um, and these dollars can only be used for those types of purposes. Are, sure. Is there any change in course in things that we might invest in or get ahead of to make sure that we keep this trend? Because sometimes, obviously, yeah. these monies have to be used to, to reinvest into that world. Yeah, correct. And I think if you talk to Bumpus, she would tell you that the fall this year that they have laid out and have planned will be busier than last fall. And so... There's a chance that these numbers maybe could even get any better, or at least be where, where they were. Um, you know, I, she would tell you that July was more of a slow month for them, but in initial data, it looks like it still may be really good. What drives this, of course, is average daily room rates, which we all know if you may have traveled is really high, so it's high here as well. And then uh, occupancy rates, which have held st steady for around 70%. And so uh, you take that. I was uh, at the airport on Friday uh, uh, for a, a visioning session, and they talked about how in, I think, the month of July, they had over 280,000 people come, come through the airport. Yeah, so, they're expanding yeah. both parking and terminal. Exactly. To accommodate. So you think about that. That helps us, right? And so um, I think – We've got a really good uh, team at Visit Knoxville that is always lo looking to bring new things here and, and rotating things. So I think these numbers uh, have a great chance of continuing. And then also it allows us to expand our mindset on what we can use money related to tourism on. We know that our plan is to cover the debt service payment related to the multi-use stadium out, out of this, which uh, as we're going right now, won't be a problem uh and it wasn't going to be a problem because we have very healthy reserves in this fund um but it en enables us to do other things that's maybe related to travel ball and things like that that draw people here for from a tourist or, um, attraction standpoint well I, I in anticipation of this meeting and seeing that number i actually reached out to a couple of the hotel groups that i know and and um interestingly enough they said that more more competition, more hotels coming online is actually helping everybody. It's just continuing to to be more and more and more inventory, which I think is attracting a lot of larger groups. I know just in the downtown area, we, in addition to long-term developments in the AJ building, there's another long-term hotel development near the stadium. But even 
uh, in the paper mill area, which you would think is is flush with hotels, there's a few more that are actually in the hopper, and that's um, good. It, it continues to add more and more inventory that people are excited about. Commissioner Hill, you have a question? Microphone. There you go. Just a, curious, Chris, you you were talking about how you were seeing um, last year some, and then this year even more, this um, flattening of the um, local sales top tax option for like May and June. The, um, and I'm, I'm just curious, before this past year, is it typical that those numbers go down anyway in years past or not? I would say uh, the previous two years of growth are atypical, right? I mean, we typically do not see 14.9 and 15.2% of revenue growth in local option sales tax. It's just really um, un unheard of. I guess um, if you look back um, and to the Great Recession where sales tax was flat or negative from 08 to probably 12 or 13, I guess, maybe came, started coming back in 12, um, typically we see two, three, four, five percent increases year over year. You don't see 14.9 followed by 15.2. Uh, and so, um, you know, that's intriguing. And so even at 7.2 percent this year, that's higher than than average. And so I think um, what we're seeing is, um, you know, a flattening of that. Uh, you know, a lot of things play into this, right? And so you 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 think about this. I think I saw where uh, the average mortgage now is three is three thousand dollars a month, right? So so you think about things like that that can that can reduce the amount that you have to spend on um, other expenses. So things like that can help to to reduce sales tax collections because yeah. uh, if you're spending money on uh, mortgage and insurance and things like that, then you're going to have less to spend on um, things that are uh, not essential. The whole thing's been atypical. I, I think so. I think those those years where they were very high. Mm -hmm. Now, good for schools, right? So if you're on those years, and so you, you, you look at what schools have been able to do to build up their reserves, their reserves have been built up, I don't want to put words in Ron's mouth, but local option sales tax, right? So it's revenue from local option sales tax ahead of budget have built their reserves because 72.2% of the city's sales tax and the county's and 50% of Farragut's goes to schools, right? And so uh, when those numbers, now part of that is this, so uh, you can say that Ron and I did a terrible job of, of budgeting in twenty in twenty one. We we really did not think sales tax would be where it was in twenty and twenty one, and it outpaced it tr tremendously. Um, the good part about that, though, about us being so bad at our jobs, is it enabled his his reserves to grow, and that's not a bad place to be because they've got to keep three three percent, and they're well above three percent. And we'll talk about reserves in a minute about how that can, can play into things. But um, I think ultimately, 20 and 21, you were in the middle of, of COVID and Ron and I were, were, were meeting and driving around at night and saying, there's nothing open. What are we going to do? There's no way that sales tax can, 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 can be good for us coming in. And then truly we saw one month of a decrease of, nine percent and after that it was just all high and um, from a budgetary standpoint that year for 20 we just took us not only just us a lot of people took a really flat approach uh, uh dr Cole, how do you how do you reconcile that I, I think every single month for the least the last 24 if not 36 months uh, you and i have corresponded and you said the numbers are up this month. We don't expect it the next couple of months. Don't get used to it. And then 
literally for the last 36 months, every single month we've had this conversation. Yet at the same time, at least for the last two years, we continue to, through investment committee, even through our pension retirement uh, investment committee, as well as the Knox County investment committee and, and everything else, there continues to be these reports that say, you know, that the recession is literally right around the corner. I mean, it just, for, for 24 months, it's, it's almost here, it's almost here. And even though if it's going to be, a, sometimes there's a soft landing and sometimes it's right around the corner and now we're getting a year out from a presidential election where everybody's head goes on fire regardless. But yet, every time we hear about this pending recession, the numbers get better and better and better and better and better. How do you balance? I know you you all conservatively budget across the board, but there seems to be this sort of imbalance all the time between doom and gloom and like what people are actually doing. Sure. I think that's a, a great question. I, I would say, you know, you know, I, I don't intentionally tell you all it's going to be bad and it's going to be good. I mean, it's because I don't no, you just you, send us the data. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to give you the facts of what I have, right? I, I send you dashboards that say we're in a recession. Well, that's, you know, from a, a reputable source that is saying by all the, the metrics, we're in a recession. I mean, a, a lot of this just doesn't make sense right now, right? And so... Um, this is the best recession ever. It's correct. I mean, that's what I've, I've often said, if if our recession is flat this year, so, you know, I hate to say sign me up, but sign me up because then we know what it is. You know, uh, Ron and I, as we started to work on the budget for 24, we contact Dr. Bill Fox at UT, who does, who's one of the three people that the state call on, and we say, okay, what sales tax going to do for fiscal year 24? He says flat we say let's budget flat then <laughs> well it's took a few months but it's starting to flatten out but it's still not flat right and i think historically that's what's in, in, interesting to me and ron's a lot older than me and so he's been here a lot long I'm kidding uh, so you so you think about this historically when we go into a recession okay in knox county where as a the the country's in a recession, and they'll say state revenues are down 10%. Okay, we're typically down about five. I mean, we have some insulation because of UT, TVA, ORNL. I mean, we've got big things like that around us that doesn't make the recession as bad normally as it is for everybody else. On the flip side of that, though, when you come out and they say you're 10% ahead, we're about 5% ahead. We're never so we're more. We have some some cushioning there, which I think is not a bad thing, but the the sales tax numbers, um, I mean, I think a lot of it is driven online sales, but I think you know, think about this too. The flip side of this is you see a report last month or, or through this month that credit card debt hit an all time high, right? So I think what's happening is people are still spending, but they're putting it on credit and they just don't seem to, to care. And so that makes it hard when you're trying to think about how, how to manage. I, I think the, the, good, the good part is across the board in all of our funds, we have healthy reserves and um, reserves as in, in fund balance. And it will allow us when once once that recession does hit, to be able to to take that and just kind of level out until, until we get through it. Um, because I would probably say, and Ron will correct me if I'm wrong, schools have probably never had this healthy of a reserve. And so, it's, you know, people will say, well, spend it. Hold on. You know, you want to be able to, 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 to cushion that when this, this when, when a down cycle does happen. I think, you're only as good as as the experts say. Um, but but uh, I guess my question was where how much of that cushion though is too cautionary? We're we're a growing county with big needs, and we sort of have this always cautious, over cautious report. You know, like uh, vision on things. Where yes, I'm a, I'm a big believer in being a good you know steward of the money and making sure we have a good long term planning. But we're also, 
we, we tend to sort of say, ah, we, we kind of can't afford it. We kind of can't invest in that. And we have needs in our infrastructure. We have needs in our schools. We have needs across the board. And there's, I mean, we're going to get into what our fund balances look like, but I, I, I just wonder what is that healthy balance? Because if you're always super conservative, if you, I mean, to end up with $8 million more this year that we can spend in designations in one month, that, that's four or five times what it's been in, in my time as a commissioner. That's two or three more road projects that we could have gone ahead and put into the pipeline that we know we need that we're going to sort of once again push off and push off and push off. So, I mean, I, I would argue that this commission should get more involved in the financial understanding of what our county is in this committee because we do need to translate that to what our priorities are for, for every district in this county and what we put into investing instead of continuing to build this rainy day fund. I think that's a, it's a cultural thing on a state level. I mean, the state has several billion in its rainy day fund, but it has gajillions of billions in its, you know, in its reserve fund balance. So at some point, you, you've got to invest in your own community and your own business in order to make it better. And I, so here's where I, I wonder for two approaches. Yeah. So here's two where I would challenge you and say, well, here's where you're wrong. Okay. Eight million in designations is being spent. It's not going into reserves. It's things that you've asked us to do. And so we take at the end of the year when, when we have these 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 uh, uh, re revenue over expenditure, uh, I guess opportunities, and, and then, then then we say to you all, give us some projects that you want to do, and we do those things. And so designations don't go under reserves it's it's if we were going to be ultraly cautious and conservative we'd take we'd say no none we're not going to do any let's 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 put these in reserves but instead what we're saying is no let's talk about what projects that we can do some you know we'll what we like to say is one-time projects right one-time things a lot of things that, that we heard this year during the the budget process we want to do invest in employees, right? And so, what is in, in on this designation um, list is is bonuses for employees. It's fine. Um, I think we do listen to what you're saying, but designations do not ro roll under reserves. It's expenses that are being spent, and um, I think if you look, we've actually the last couple of years really not added to the fund balance of the general fund because we are doing some of these projects. Are we, in a general sense, in your opinion, too cautious for a, a fast growing county or are we about the right balance? I mean, you've been here longer than all of us I, collectively. No, I think we push. I mean, like, um, you know, you, you think about, um, so like, let's think about engineering and public works for a second. When you're seeing gasoline tax being flat, it's, we can't just sit there and budget for an, an increase in gasoline tax when we know it's not coming. Uh, and, you know, engineering also doesn't get a, a lot of sales tax, but what it does, you know, we, like, we, uh, we've we collected this year engineering public work sales tax about $9.9 .9 I think our budget for sales tax for 24 was 9.8, so it's about, it's about flat, right? And so... Um, uh, we spent some fund balance in debt service fund to, to get out of a swap. Uh, now, we could argue we should never be, been in said swap, but we were in it. Now we're out of it. It's, it, it's, it's for the good. Um, and so we have some variable rate debt that we'll start paying more interest on because of higher interest rates. So we have to be cautious of things like that. I think, I think, what you see is, um, I think we, yes, we are cautious, but also with with the revenue sources that we have, I think we push what we can push. If, any other questions for commissioners before we wrap up? Uh, this is agenda item number six, but it's going to continue into... Oh, Commissioner Schumacher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chris, are you going to touch any of the highlights on your monthly report? Like I can. Page 17, the wheel tax, and sure. page 18, the courts. 
You want you said 17 and 18 specifically? Yes. Which is the wheel tax. I'll have to put on my glasses. Um, yeah, wh uh, wheel tax was, was really good this year. And so um, wheel tax, uh, we saw almost 15.5 million compared to the previous year of about 14.9. So that's a really good year uh, from the from the wheel tax side of things. And um, then um, related to courts, um, so I'm going to go right to left. So I'm going to start with circuit civil sessions and juvenile. Uh, a 23 to, to 22 is about 124,000 ahead of where they, they they were in 22. So um, and so that's positive. Uh, criminal courts about 380,000 from where they were a year ago. I actually talked to Clark Hammond last week, and I think they're about to have like their highest month ever of collections this month. And so um, that's intriguing. And then chantry and probates down about $530,000 um, year to year. Um, so they had some, some staff changeover of their, um, of their finance person. We have sent somebody from, from our office down there to help them to get reconciled. And so trying to figure all this out, I know that the chancellors are involved. And so I don't know if this is final, but it probably may change. So that one could be updated. And so we're trying to just work through a, 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 an accounting problem with them. So the, the funds collected are actual. A actual as of what we have now, correct. But still trying to work through an issue down, down there, which was a staffing issue. And so that number may tweak. We'll okay. see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was there anything else on the monthly report that we need? No, not to be really. Aware of? Everything, everything else uh, we, we kind of touched on just in, in total and um, just, uh, just positive, just positive news in there. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to item number seven on our agenda. Um, one of the items that um, Mr. Caldwell and I talk about a lot is fund balances and cash flow management throughout the year. So I thought we'd take a little bit of time to, uh, to do a deep dive. And uh, he's provided some information about that. Essentially, how do, we, how do we manage the money throughout the year and how do we determine how much to keep in reserves versus used to invest in the county. So Mr. Caldwell. So let's start first. Um, and I didn't bring any copies, but I did email you all out like a cash flow thing and then our fund balance policy. Um, the cash flow attachment is something that we turn into the state that Perry prepares annually. And um, it kind of shows uh, cash inflows and outflows of the general fund and the, and the general purpose school fund and then um, the av the available cash is on there to end every month and so what I would point out to you here is on the general fund if you look there are only two out of 12 months that have positive cash inflows so two months out of 12 have positive cash inflows um, schools will be similar but some of those are different because of BEP so there won't be as bad I think they have five that are positive, the rest are negative. And so, and then looking at um, available cash, like in the general fund, we hit highs in, Febu in February and March of 144 million. And then from there through November, it goes down to 73, right? And so ultimately what we're seeing, which is what we always know, is we collect revenue from property taxes November for the most part but it's December and February are our best two months of property tax collections so from a cash flow standpoint we're higher than then we just spend down spend down spend down that's what happens and so uh, there are times when we could show you a, a balance sheet and you would say where did all the money go but uh, it's you know it's it's liquid and so what I would, what, what what I've said to um, to some of you all before is, 
our fund balance helps us as well to withstand the low periods of cash flow. Now, we don't get nearly as low as like three or four years, I guess three, three or four years ago, we'd get down to like $10 million in cash in October, waiting for some property taxes to come in. And you know, you're just waiting, waiting, and then it gets better and gets better. A, a lot of, of counties will do tax anticipation notes, right? Because they know they don't have cash to to make it. So they do, but you have to pay for tax anticipation notes. And so they're not free. They're also known as TANs. Um, and so our positive reserves help us to have liquidity during times like this. And then also our overnight bank rate on interest is 5.65%. So it's not like that's doing us a disservice just sitting there, right? Um, and, so that, and so that's a positive rate of return on that. And also on top of that, we do some investing. The trustee does some in, in investing with Raymond James, but even they will tell you that at an overnight rate of 5.65%, it's hard to, to beat that. And so uh, cash flows are, are interesting. Um, ours are not nearly as tight as they used to be. Um, and, um, and it helps us to be more, more flexible. I also then sent out, uh, what County commission approved a few years back, uh, of our, uh, our, our, um, general fund operating reserve policy. And, um, uh, it starts off about purpose and definitions. Some of the things that are important in this policy so we'll go again into these reserve levels. The county will maintain as, as of each fiscal year ending June 30, a minimum level of unassigned fund balance in the general fund equivalent to three months or 25% of regular ongoing operating expenses, including transfers out. GFOA recommends two months. We went with three months. Um, back when we did this policy, it has really served us well. Funding the reserve, funding of general fund reserve targets will generally come from excess revenues over expenses or from one-time revenues. Um, conditions for use of reserves. It is the intent of the county to limit use of general fund reserves to address unanticipated non-recurring needs. I'm sure you've heard that before from me. Um, reserves should not be used to support recurring annual operating expenditures outside the current fiscal year. Um, and here's a, an interesting thing too. Excess of reserves, in the event reserves exceed the, the minimum balance required, the excess gen generally may be retained. If management and commission deem appropriate, portions of the excess may be used for the following, to provide funds for, for, for pay-as-you-go capital expenditures, to pay one-time expenditures that do not increase recurring operating costs that cannot be funded through current revenues or to prepay existing county debt and or pension obligations. And so that are some of the things that's in our, our operating reserve policy. We, we state a lot in here about, um, uh, about unassigned fund balance and we'll get into why that's important in a minute. Um, and so um, I sent you all also uh, a few articles from the, the GFR. I'm gonna embarrass you now. Who, who read the GFR without going to sleep? Without going to sleep? Oh, okay, I don't know about good. that. But. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's funny. This actually was in the GFR this month, so it was appropriate. And so uh, just some things that are, are in these articles that, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to sit here and go through every page, but I'm going to touch on some things that I think are important and tell you um, try to explain to you our philosophy on why we do certain things and some things that, that, that we may look to tweak. Um, and so first, let me start here. Um, and Perry is going to hit me because I'm going to get on a soapbox and he doesn't like when I get on a soapbox. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting to me where GFOA says uh, you should have two months of, of reserves in your fund balance, right, in, in reserves. But then they sent out these articles to say, maybe you shouldn't have two months in your reserves, right? Um, so 
they, they want you to rethink, but they also will say that it's local. But what they also say in here, which is very important, and the thing that I think is most important, is while you, while we at GFOA and you may think you don't need, that you just need one month of reserves, not two, uh, you may want to listen to what your rating agencies say at Moody's and S&P, because that can affect your bond rating. And so to me, what we hear from our bond rating is, is always important. And so we'll, we'll get into that here. Um, so on the first page the, under the uh, should we rethink reserves, there's one thing that is a bug of boo of mine that uh, is at the bottom of the page in blue. Reserves versus fund balance. You'll hear me say this a lot. Fund balance is an accounting term that describes the difference between assets and liabilities. Reserves is a budget and policy term that describes the fungible resources available outside of the budget for use and the resources appropriated inside of the budget are insufficient. So there is an overlap between fund balance and reserves. You'll often hear people will just refer to as reserves. You will always hear me say fund balance. The reason being, we have a policy that talks about we keep our three month of of amount in unassigned fund balance. We have not we we have not set aside quote unquote a reserve. We keep ours in unassigned fund balance. Um, um, and so reserves are the the liquid financial resources that local governments do not include in the annual spending plan. Resources that are held back from the budget and held in reserves for some other purpose. Um, the most important purpose is to respond to significant unplanned and unavoidable cost or revenue losses, such as a natural disaster. Um, so can I, can I stop yeah. you at that point? Have we ever had a, um, has Knox County ever had a emergency reserve fund, a natural disaster fund? Cause I, I'm thinking about this past month, we had a tornado come through Knox County. Um, we had a lot of communication about things that we could do as a, you know, what what is our role in this and what can we do to help support the community? Um, ultimately, that's turned into an allocation of resources that was going to help with some of the storm cleanup across the county. And that process is, is because we're having to go through a, a longer legislative process, delays things by, you know, weeks, if even months before you get that contractor on board and before it goes out and helps the services. And, and while we're trying to expedite that, is have we ever considered, you know, putting together a true natural disaster or public emergency fund reserve that we build up over time so when things like this happen, we can act as a legislative body in a, in a far quicker way than waiting to kind of... Well, it wouldn't be any quicker, whether it's in a reserve or it's an unassigned fund balance. Um, we can do an emergency contract, which we have a contract with the company that you're referring to already in place. And so all we're asking for now is an appropriation of funds uh, to pay them. Um, and so I think the only thing that would, would have sped up that process is if commission would have had an emergency session of county commission and said, you know, we're going to appropriate said funds for this and start at this date. That's the only difference. I think um, whether you set aside a reserve that's for uh, a disaster or it stays in unassigned funds, that, to me, to me, there's no difference. To, to me, it's it's still a reserve. It's just it's just if if you have a reserve, it's for a certain purpose, right? And so unassigned fund balance is more broad, but 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 can be used for the same things. Okay. Yeah. You you agree? Perry agrees. Um, Perry don't always agree with me. Just so you all know, he. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times you can think of, of a reserve, and these articles are pretty good. You can think of a reserve as insurance or a savings account. There's truth in both of those uh, uh, segments. And, and they talk in here about the advantage and disadvantages of 
of thinking about both, um, you know, about, well, maybe you should have insurance to a certain point and then use your, your reserve for the, for the other point. Um, and then thinking about it. And, and a lot of times you do that also because what you try to do is you're trying to relate this to something that the average person understands, right? So if you talk to an average citizen and you're, think, you're talking about a savings account, they understand that more than if you're talking about unassigned fund balance or, or a reserve. They're not like the three of us who are nerds and that's all we do. But I think that's why you do things. Or, or insurance is the same way, right? You, you know you have insurance to a certain point and then it's on you after that. So in, this, in these articles, they, they, they talk about that a lot and try to explain the reserves in, in, in that sense. And um, oftentimes what GFOA does in these articles is they just want you to, they, they, they want to press on you to think and to think outside the box. And uh, they're talking here about instead of having a set number to get to in reserves, maybe you need a range, right? Okay, that's fine. We can, we can, we can put a range on it. Actually, we probably have a range every year because every year that our budget either increases or, or decreases, then our, our number fluctuates. And so there's some of that, but there's also unknowns too, right? And so, um, um, so there's a, there's a chance of experiencing a loss from a totally unexpected source or the unknowns. I mean, so um, i trying to think of something. So let's assume we are, and this is a long time ago, but bear with me. Town of Farragut, for example, right? Used to wholly, not wholly, but a big piece of their of their budget was hall income tax, right? Well, state does away with it, right? State says we're, we're doing away with hall income tax. So if they had put reserves to the side and was counting on hall income tax year over year and that gets taken away, then they're going to have to go back and amend their policy and also either or come up with another source that, that goes in there. And so not knowing the unknowns also and things that are out of your control can, can, can change your, your way of thinking. Um, uh, but, you know, so let me say this too. And this is what, so what we hear year over year from Moody's and S&P on our ratings call is they will say you have an above average um, debt burden <laughs> as an example. They'll say it's manageable and you do a good job with it. Um, but what offsets that decrease that they may give us in that area is they love the amount of reserves we have. And so they'll say you keep a healthy amount of unassigned fund, fund balance and it gives you flexibility to do things that you need to do, right? And so if you're not on those calls, then you, then, 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 then you don't hear that, right? You don't, you don't hear that's what Moody's and S&P like. Now, is Moody's and S&P the end all be all? No, but if Moody's or S&P said, uh, we don't like some of the changes you made, we're gonna downgrade you from a double A plus to a double A, then our interest rates go up and then when we have added interest expense and we can't do certain projects, right? And so d despite what these articles say, I, I lean more heavily on Moody's and S&P because I don't want to do anything that's going to impact that rating. Listen, I don't have to get to AAA. You know, listen, we'd love to sit up here and all smile with a AAA bond rating. The difference between AA plus and AAA is minute, right? I mean, you often wonder if it's even worth getting there because it's harder to stay there than, than it is and then there's a bigger story about, about getting um, downgraded. You don't need to report that, Jesse, because <laughs> you're gonna say that I never wanna get to AAA. It's not what I said, but there, um, there are, I mean, you look at it, there are, you, you never hear about, you know, there's a little story when somebody goes to AAA, but when they lose it, it's huge, right? Oh my Lord, they have, 
the U.S., right, recently in S&P, changes the way what, 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 what we, we can buy now. The state says we can't buy certain tre treasuries now because the, 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 the U.S. got downgraded. So keep that in mind. I, we listen a lot to what S&P and Moody say, um, and that drives me more, don't tell Jeff away this, than what they say, but... Uh, they say they do say to develop a comprehensive reserves policy. We have that, right? So we have a policy, and they say every year, Knox County, thank you for having policies. They say that they then deem you to have good financial management. So we not only have a reserve policy, we have a debt service policy, capital asset policy, maybe a couple more. At, and so, in mind, is all, are all of those put in one package to approve on an annual basis during our budget process? No, ultimately, you approve them one time. Now, if we ever make changes to them, we would bring changes to you okay. for, for approval. So they, it just stays as is in perpetuity unless it does. changes are made. Correct. And I think, listen, there's one thing that these articles may do is Perry and I will sit down and we may make some tweaks to our reserve policy based off these articles. Will they be? Major tweaks, no, but there may be some changes that, that we think are, are worthwhile. Um, and, um, you know, so as an example, they say in here, optimize your, your investment of reserve funds. So they're telling you, if you can be less liquid, invest those funds. Okay, we, we already do that, but a lot of times now, what happens is with a 5.65% overnight rate, you just leave it there. It just stays, and um, and that and that rolls. And um, um, I think um, there's also a good uh, on the article page 30. There's a history of interest rate di differences between bond ratings. Uh, um, that's pretty um, interesting. That there's there's not a lot between double A AA and triple A. There's some, and if you're double A plus, you're a little higher than than double A. Um, and talks about uh, ratings and things like that. Um, and so I think these articles are good, though, because um, it just helps us to think and stay fresh. And Perry and I and a lot of our, our team members, as much as I was, was, was giving them a hard time, we, we do go to a lot of, uh, of GFOA seminars and webinars, and they do pro provide a ton of, of good information. This one just humored me because I'm like, your policy says you should have too, too much of reserves, and now you're saying, well, it's more of a local thing. And it is a local thing. I think, you know, to, 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 to your question, Larson, we could, could we say unassigned fund balance is $80 million? Let's put 10% of that into uh, a natural disaster reserve. We could. And then it would show as a reserve fund balance, eight, unassigned, 72. But really, it's the same thing. And so uh, we just chose to keep, to, to keep our, ours more broad in the, in the sense of keeping it uh, unassigned. Now, listen, I would but say like this. But like the hotel multi tax, that obviously that's based upon a tax of legislative you know, origin, but that is can only be used for X. Whereas if we don't put a particular fund together and keep it in the general fund, we can use it. If we don't, if we go five years without a natural disaster, then correct. great. And if we, but alternatively, we want to make sure that if, if we get something big, we have the reserves to keep up with that. Yeah. I, th I would say this too. When I'm quoting two months from, from GFOA and worth rents, we're talking about general fund. If your schools and Ron G G GFOA ha has a different recommendation for schools on top of what the state says. Um, and uh, I think for us, um, I think in, in this article, it says that AAA counties have 35% of reserves in, 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 in reserves. So that's between four and five months. So, so GFOA is recommending two months, a, Triple A County has four and a half months of, of, of reserves, and so you see, so 
you think about that, and it's kind of like, not that they have to talk, but rating ag agencies want you to be in one place and others have a different location. I think you can be in a fairly good spot. Um, you know, we've tried to get to a spot to where we're liquid, which, which we are now, um, from the standpoint of not worrying about cash flows year over year. We're able to help with some one-time expenses um, as we as we close out the year, and we're into it. We're in a spot too, and I would say this. I'm going to speak for Ron. Uh, countywide, uh, whenever the 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 recession hits, whenever it is, <laughs> uh, we can we can withstand that recession because of these reserves. And so this is what we would build them up for. Not saying that we wouldn't cut back on some expenses, but you wouldn't you wouldn't fill it right. You'd you just, we're going to use some reserves is what they're there for. We're going to use some reserves is what they're there for. And um, I think that part is, is useful. And so, um, you know, I, we appreciate questions and comments. Like, uh, do, do, do Commissioner Jay and I always agree? Sure, no. I'm not, I mean, I don't agree with, with myself. I mean, it's fine. Um, but it's fine. I mean, so we, but we talk and it's, and then we, we come out and we're fine. And I, I'm, I'm that way with everybody. You, you can, can challenge what we do and we'll explain what, what, what our mindset is. Uh, I, I would say this, I would always rather take a semi conservative approach to budgeting, have money at the end of the year to where we can come back and say, okay, what are some projects that we wish we could have done that we can do now? And, Best part is to is to pay cash for them, right? I mean, so that's that's just some examples. Like um, we're we're doing that with the new EPW facility. As you know, we, our goal was to build that facility and really bond very small amount of it. And so, are there other questions for Director Colwell? All right, thank you for the additional information on our fund balances and cash flow management. Um, I'll ask the committee, are there future topics that you would like to add to finance committee meetings to get a more intricate dive into? Bueller? Bueller? You thinking, Commissioner Bueller is thinking. I mean, uh, Debt, sales tax, property tax, um, bond ratings. I mean, is there anything to add to future agendas that's off the top of your head? If not, yep. Oh, Commissioner Bueller. I, I mean, I know we've done this at different chairman's briefings and things like that, but I think it's always helpful to the body to revisit how each of our revenue streams uh, is used. For instance, property tax local option sales tax, all of that. But, you know, we certain percentages of this go to schools and, and, and roads and libraries and so forth. Just it's good for this body to see a breakdown of all of that from time to time. Okay. That's a great topic for next time. We'll add that to the agenda. I also think it's also good to, you alluded to it, Director Caldwell, quickly of just how, especially property tax, sales tax is broken up. We've got town of Farragut. We've got the city of Knoxville that, contributes a certain amount to the schools, how those, how this, the pie gets divvied up and, and used. So um, wheels tax gets divvied up to four or five different elements. I mean, it's um, yeah. One thing complicated. Too, so I'm glad you, that, that, that was brought up. And so you, we had a somewhat of, of a discussion this year because we moved some of Ron's property taxes to debt service and uh, some of his board thought that the devil, Chris, was taking money from schools, and I'm just kidding. Um, truth is this, he, he and I, over time, want to get as much of that over to, to debt service because it, re, it, it, it reduces the transfer from general purpose school fund to debt service. Furthermore, what it does is if you all are approving a TIF for a development, they have to pay debt service. 
if those pennies are in his fund and it's a transfer, that lowers the amount they have to pay. The, the true amount that he is paying into debt service, if it was truly there in the pennies of, of property tax, that, that would be a higher percentage, thus more coming back to, to the county. Does that make sense? Yep. I can see nodding, but I don't, yeah. All right, any other business to come before this committee? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.